So let's look next at naming carbonyl compounds. They're the highest priority ones of all. So these are usually just suffixes, and we have carboxylic acids are the highest. The ketones out of these three are the lowest. Ketone names end with own. That's not one, it's own because it's part of a word. It's a suffix. And you need a number because a ketone, if you have a chain of 10 carbons, uh, the ketone could come not on the end ones, but it could come at any of the other eight positions. And those are going to give rise to a 2 own, a 3 own, a 4 own, etc. So you need to show the position. Um, aldehydes, on the other hand, because an aldehyde has to come at the end of a chain, uh, it's automatically going to be um, a part of that chain if it's the highest priority group. And uh, so we don't need to show uh, the number. It's automatically defining position one. Now, I would like to point out one of the problems um, with this naming system. The ketone naming system has become very popular and is widely used uh, in chemical catalogs and so on. And yet the AL system, it is still widely used, but it's not as popular probably uh, because in conversation, if you talk about butanone versus butanol, it's very clear one is a ketone, one is an alcohol. But if you talk about uh, an aldehyde versus an alcohol, now you have uh, a bit of ambiguity because this looks similar in, in writing. The A and the ol ending of an alcohol look quite similar. Particularly if you have an American accent, you may say al. Uh, so you may talk about propanal. Is that al? Is it ol? You can try and enunciate it. You can say uh, butanol versus butanal, uh, but it's really a little tricky. <coughs> so uh, <coughs> this is usually used in written communication, but uh, less so in casual conversation. <coughs> uh, if you're the sort of person who goes to a party and starts talking about butanol, that is, in casual conversation. Now, carboxylic acids. We've already seen some of these. They're named as an alkanoic acid. Again, uh, no number needed because the carboxylic acid will automatically be at position one. And esters, uh, which I didn't mention in priority terms, but esters are named as if they were made from an alcohol plus a carboxylic acid. It's a kind of Victorian idea that somehow an ester is the salt of an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. Uh, we've got an OH compound reacting with an acid. That's reminiscent of any OH reacting with an acid to form a salt plus water. It's completely uh, misleading and false today, but the naming system derives from that idea. If you take NaOH and H2SO4, you get sodium sulfate from sulfuric acid, sodium hydroxide. If we take methyl OH and uh, propanoic acid, we get methyl propanoate. So we have um, an example of this would be the one I gave you. Methyl propanoate. So this is a three carbon carboxylate. And a one carbon alkyl group. Uh, now, for all these other uh, groups I talked about, I didn't give you a lot of examples uh, because we've actually covered most of these along the way. If you look through your notes, 
I've given you several carboxylic acids and uh, several uh, ketones. Let me just put uh, one up, um, though, for an aldehyde, because I haven't given you so many aldehydes. So with this compound, we have this is a butanal. And we have a double bond in the middle, so it's going to be a butenal. We also have a methyl group as a substituent at position two. So this is and the old naming for that would have been Finally I'd like to cover some common names uh, as I've mentioned before UPAC ac accepts and recognizes and even uh, uh, prefers uh, some common names that are so widely used it would be silly to try and change them. Um, so, for instance, with uh, something like acetone, uh, this is always going to be acetone. It's not normally called propanone. Uh, Acetic acid in kindergarten, they learn that they can make a, a volcano from uh, mixing vinegar and uh, baking soda, and it's the acetic acid in the baking soda. So we learn from a, a young age about acetone, acetic acid. And so UPAC recognizes these. Now, it doesn't mean we can't give a uh, systematic name to these. We can if we really need them. And actually, um, when I worked in industry, we were fond of uh, labeling our bottles of acetone as propanone or propantuone or coming up with all sorts of alternative names that any chemist in the room knew this was acetone, but it stopped the guys coming off the plant and uh, nicking our uh, bottles of acetone. Because if, if we just labeled them acetone, they would disappear within a few days onto the plant, never to be seen again. So this was a good way of uh, protecting ourselves. Uh, so acetic acid, um, more complex ones. Once we learn the friedel crafts reaction, you'll learn it's very easy to make aromatic ketones of this type. And instead of labeling them <coughs> as some kind of uh, methanone derivative, these are usually called something like benzophenone. If this had an acetic acid group on this side, a CH3CO, it would be acetophenone. But this is derived from benzoic acid, so we would call it Benzophenone. The phenone part tells us it's a ketone attached onto our benzene ring. A couple of aromatic derivatives that we've seen already. So we separated benzoic acid from benzophenone. Uh, or, or actually from Benzyl last semester. You may remember that um, in lab. So this name, uh, as with all carboxylic acids, because it's got the word acid in, it does nicely remind you that you have got an acidic group here. Now, um, uh, these ones I've given you are all recognized by UPAC and can be used as the, the main name. There are some which are only accepted for the parent compound. So although I gave an example earlier of a uh, propanoic acid, uh, 
The old name for this is actually propionic acid. And you can call propionic acid itself by that old-fashioned name if you wish, and UPAC won't get on your case. But as soon as you put a methyl group on there, you have to start using the systematic names. So uh, that's all I want to say on uh, naming, but uh, I would like to draw your attention to the, the workbook. And so if you turn to page 97 in the workbook, you can see that's page 97 in 2016. It's probably going to change uh, in other years, but um, this is the first of those problems. And I'd like you to work through that page of problems now.